General Education Diploma, English Language A, Listening, 2013 to 2014, Semester One, Second Session. While I'm reading your instructions, the teacher will check from the back of the class to make sure that everybody can hear. The teacher will not stop the tape. You'll hear each text three times. The first time, only listen. The second time, complete the task. And the third time, check your work. The examination will start now. Question 1. Look at question 1 on your exam paper. You're going to hear a conversation between an office manager and his boss. But first you have 30 seconds to study the task. Now listen for the first time. Ah, oh, James, come in, please. Ah, uh, what can I do for you? Actually, you can explain something to me. You see, I've just had a phone call from head office. They seemed very upset. Not very nice on my first day back at work. How are you feeling, by the way? Much better, thank you. The doctors say I should be OK. If I avoid stress. Uh-huh. Anyway, what are they so upset about? They say we've completely ignored a memo that they sent us three months ago. What's that all about? Ah, oh, yes, they wanted all our branches throughout the country to save energy. So they set everyone, including us, the same target. A reduction of 25% in electricity bills within three months. So that's what they meant. They kept saying that our bills had only gone down by 5%. How do you explain that? Well, I have followed their suggestions wherever I could. What did they suggest? Uh, lots of things. First, they said we should replace all our old light bulbs with modern energy-saving bulbs. But we did that last year. Exactly. And the same applies to their second suggestion. Which was? To make sure everyone switches off the lights when a room is not being used. I held a staff meeting about that last February. I know, I was there, and it worked very well. What else? Uh, we should use fans instead of air conditioning. Problem is, it's been an especially hot summer. All of our staff would have walked out if I'd switched off the ACs. Right again. I mean, did they actually make any new suggestions? There was one. At the end of each working day, we should unplug all computers, laptops and other office equipment. What good would that do? Well, apparently, all electronics continue to draw power when they're plugged in even when they're switched off. I didn't know that. Neither did I. Anyway, it was a good suggestion, so we did it immediately. That probably explains the 5% reduction in our bill. Probably. You see, we started thinking about saving electricity a long time before we got that memo from head office. In fact, of their 14 suggestions, we had already done 13 of them. All except for the one I mentioned. So our electricity bills were already very low. Yes, and so a further 25% cut was impossible. Thank you, that's very clear. So could you prepare a report, just a short one, explaining all of this in writing? Hopefully that'll satisfy them. Let's hope so. Anyway, what else has been happening while I've been away? Now listen again, 
and complete the task. Ah, oh, James, come in, please. Ah, what can I do for you? Actually, you can explain something to me. You see, I've just had a phone call from head office. They seemed very upset. Not very nice on my first day back at work. How are you feeling, by the way? Much better, thank you. The doctors say I should be okay if I avoid stress. Uh huh. Anyway, what are they so upset about? They say we've completely ignored a memo that they sent us three months ago. What's that all about? Ah,、oh, yes, they wanted all our branches throughout the country to save energy, so they set everyone, including us, the same target: a reduction of twenty-five percent in electricity bills within three months. So that's what they meant. They kept saying that our bills had only gone down by five percent. How do you explain that? Well, I have followed their suggestions wherever I could. What did they suggest?、Uh, lots of things. First, they said we should replace all our old light bulbs with modern energy-saving bulbs. But we did that last year. Exactly, and the same applies to their second suggestion. Which was to make sure everyone switches off the lights when a room is not being used. I held a staff meeting about that last February. I know. I was there, and it worked very well. What else?、Uh, we should use fans instead of air conditioning. Problem is, it's been an especially hot summer. All of our staff would have walked out if I'd switched off the ACs. Right again. I mean, did they actually make any new suggestions? There was one. At the end of each working day, we should unplug all computers, laptops, and other office equipment. What good would that do? Well, apparently, all electronics continue to draw power when they're plugged in, even when they're switched off. I didn't know that. Neither did I. Anyway, it was a good suggestion, so we did it immediately. That probably explains the five percent reduction in our bill. Probably. You see, we started thinking about saving electricity a long time before we got that memo from head office. In fact, of their fourteen suggestions, we had already done thirteen of them, all except for the one I mentioned. So our electricity bills were already very low. Yes, and so a further twenty-five percent cut was impossible. Thank you. That's very clear. So, could you prepare a report, just a short one, explaining all of this in writing? Hopefully, that'll satisfy them. Let's hope so. Anyway, what else has been happening while I've been away? Now listen for the last time and check your work. Ah, James, come in, please. Ah, what can I do for you? Actually, you can explain something to me. You see, I've just had a phone call from head office. They seemed very upset. Not very nice on my first day back at work. How are you feeling, by the way? Much better, thank you. The doctors say I should be okay if I avoid stress. Uh huh. Anyway, what are they so upset about? They say we've completely ignored a memo that they sent us three months ago. What's that all about? Ah,、oh, yes, they wanted all our branches throughout the country to save energy, so they set everyone, including us, the same target: a reduction of twenty-five percent in electricity bills within three months. So that's what they meant. They kept saying that our bills had only gone down by five percent. How do you explain that? Well, I have followed their suggestions wherever I could. What did they suggest?、Uh, lots of things. First, they said we should replace all our old light bulbs with modern energy-saving bulbs. But we did that last year. Exactly, and the same applies to their second suggestion.
Which was? To make sure everyone switches off the lights when a room is not being used. I held a staff meeting about that last February. I know, I was there, and it worked very well. What else? Uh, we should use fans instead of air conditioning. Problem is, it's been an especially hot summer. All of our staff would have walked out if I'd switched off the ACs. Right again. I mean, did they actually make any new suggestions? There was one. At the end of each working day, we should unplug all computers, laptops and other office equipment. What good would that do? Well, apparently, all electronics continue to draw power when they're plugged in, even when they're switched off. I didn't know that. Neither did I. Anyway, it was a good suggestion, so we did it immediately. That probably explains the 5% reduction in our bill. Probably. You see, we started thinking about saving electricity a long time before we got that memo from head office. In fact, of their 14 suggestions, we had already done 13 of them. All except for the one I mentioned. So our electricity bills were already very low. Yes, and so a further 25% cut was impossible. Thank you, that's very clear. So could you prepare a report, just a short one, explaining all of this in writing? Hopefully that'll satisfy them. Let's hope so. Anyway, what else has been happening while I've been away? That is the end of question one. Now go on to question two. Look at question two on your exam paper. You're going to hear an old woman talking about her school days. The text will be in two parts, each with a different task. But first you have 30 seconds to study the two tasks. Now listen to part one. I grew up in New Zealand and started primary school in 1958. Every day we studied from 8.30 in the morning until 3.45 in the afternoon. The school didn't have a canteen, so I always had to bring my lunch with me, usually some sandwiches made by my mum. To go with lunch, every student used to get a bottle of milk to drink, provided free of charge by the government. That might sound great, but the milk wasn't kept in a fridge, so it would quickly become sour if the day was hot. When that happened, it tasted terrible, but we were still expected to drink it. In the first two grades, we used pencils to write in our books. Only after that were we allowed to use pens with ink. Unfortunately, writing was always a problem for me. Not because I was careless or because I didn't want to learn, but because I was left-handed. You see, in those days, children were forced to write only with their right hand. If they tried to use their left hand, they were punished until they learned to do things properly. So you won't be surprised to hear that I didn't like school much. My only good memory was one very special day when Queen Elizabeth came to visit our school. She actually spoke to me and was ever so nice. 
I don't think she cared whether I was left or right-handed. Now listen again and complete the task. I grew up in New Zealand and started primary school in 1958. Every day we studied from 8.30 in the morning until 3.45 in the afternoon. The school didn't have a canteen, so I always had to bring my lunch with me, usually some sandwiches made by my mum. To go with lunch, every student used to get a bottle of milk to drink, provided free of charge by the government. That might sound great, but the milk wasn't kept in a fridge, so it would quickly become sour if the day was hot. When that happened, it tasted terrible, but we were still expected to drink it. In the first two grades, we used pencils to write in our books. Only after that were we allowed to use pens with ink. Unfortunately, writing was always a problem for me. Not because I was careless or because I didn't want to learn, but because I was left-handed. You see, in those days, children were forced to write only with their right hand. If they tried to use their left hand, they were punished until they learned to do things properly. So you won't be surprised to hear that I didn't like school much. My only good memory was one very special day when Queen Elizabeth came to visit our school. She actually spoke to me and was ever so nice. I don't think she cared whether I was left or right-handed. Now listen for the last time and check your work. I grew up in New Zealand and started primary school in 1958. Every day we studied from 8.30 in the morning until 3.45 in the afternoon. The school didn't have a canteen, so I always had to bring my lunch with me, usually some sandwiches made by my mum. To go with lunch, every student used to get a bottle of milk to drink, provided free of charge by the government. That might sound great, but the milk wasn't kept in a fridge, so it would quickly become sour if the day was hot. When that happened, it tasted terrible, but we were still expected to drink it. In the first two grades, we used pencils to write in our books. Only after that were we allowed to use pens with ink. Unfortunately, writing was always a problem for me. Not because I was careless or because I didn't want to learn, but because I was left-handed. You see, in those days, children were forced to write only with their right hand. If they tried to use their left hand, they were punished until they learn to do things properly. So you won't be surprised to hear that I didn't like school much. My only good memory was one very special day when Queen Elizabeth came to visit our school. She actually spoke to me and was ever so nice. I don't think she cared whether I was left or right-handed. Now listen to part two. Otherwise, all I remember was the discipline. Everything was so strict. All of us were expected to wear the school uniform. And if anything, even the smallest detail was wrong, we were immediately sent home with a note, warning our parents to follow the school rules. 
The boys had to wear a tie, even when the weather was hot. And the girls had to wear dresses, not trousers, even in the cold of winter. When we arrived at school every morning, the teacher checked to see if we all had clean hands and a clean handkerchief. Then, at assembly, we would all line up, the boys in their classes and the girls in theirs. At the end, a boy used to beat a drum while we marched in a line back to class. It was just like being in the army. In those days, teachers were allowed to hit a child's hand with a ruler if they were doing something wrong. In fact, it was usually the boys who were punished in this way. But it never seemed to improve their behaviour. They were actually rather proud of it. For them, there was a far worse punishment being sent to spend some time in the girls' classes. They hated that. Now listen again and complete the task. Otherwise, all I remember was the discipline. Everything was so strict. All of us were expected to wear the school uniform. And if anything, even the smallest detail was wrong, we were immediately sent home with a note, warning our parents to follow the school rules. The boys had to wear a tie, even when the weather was hot. And the girls had to wear dresses, not trousers, even in the cold of winter. When we arrived at school every morning, the teacher checked to see if we all had clean hands and a clean handkerchief. Then, at assembly, we would all line up, the boys in their classes and the girls in theirs. At the end, a boy used to beat a drum while we marched in a line back to class. It was just like being in the army. In those days, teachers were allowed to hit a child's hand with a ruler if they were doing something wrong. In fact, it was usually the boys who were punished in this way. But it never seemed to improve their behaviour. They were actually rather proud of it. For them, there was a far worse punishment. Being sent to spend some time in the girls' classes, they hated that. Now listen for the last time and check your work. Otherwise, all I remember was the discipline. Everything was so strict. All of us were expected to wear the school uniform. And if anything, even the smallest detail was wrong, we were immediately sent home with a note, warning our parents to follow the school rules. The boys had to wear a tie, even when the weather was hot. And the girls had to wear dresses, not trousers, even in the cold of winter. When we arrived at school every morning, the teacher checked to see if we all had clean hands and a clean handkerchief. Then, at assembly, we would all line up, the boys in their classes and the girls in theirs. At the end, a boy used to beat a drum while we marched in a line back to class. It was just like being in the army. In those days, teachers were allowed to hit a child's hand with a ruler if they were doing something wrong. In fact, it was usually the boys who were punished in this way. But it never seemed to improve their behaviour. They were actually rather proud of it. For them, there was a far worse punishment. 
Being sent to spend some time in the girls' classes, they hated that. Thank you. That is the end of the listening examination. Now go on to the next question.